Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In this video, I am going to walk through an example of how you would convert a pre-money safe using the pre-money method. When talking about converting safes, there are different types that you may encounter. There's pre-money safes, discount safes, post-money safes, and a variety of mixed safe structures. That said, separate from the type of safe, there are two underlying mechanisms you can use when converting a safe. The first is called the pre-money method, which is when the conversion of the safe is happening in effect alongside the Series A, and as a result, the shares created by the safe do not influence the Series A share price, or the percent ownership method, where the shares converted created by the safe do influence the Series A share price. In this first video, I'm going to walk through the pre-money method, but in a subsequent video, I will show the percent ownership method. These videos are all part of a larger series I will be starting, where as I share practice problems for sale on my company's website, I will post various videos showing portions of how I would solve some of the practice problems where I'm providing full video walkthroughs as well as Excel support. If you have any questions on that, please review the website link in the video description. With that in mind, we can start the video. So I have here my details on the financing scenario, which I'm going to be dropping into this new pre-money method tab. Right now I'm just formatting the tab to get it ready for the data. I go to the financing scenario tab and copy over my information. And once I've resized that, we will pause to talk through what we're covering today in terms of the numbers. So in this video, I will be showing a safe converting where one and a half million was invested on a pre-money valuation cap of 15 million. And it is converting as part of a series A where 8 million is being raised on a pre-money valuation for the round of 24 million. The first thing I'm going to do is show how my safe converts. Then I will show the series A being raised and how many shares those investors receive. And then I will show our post money ownership at the end for all the different investor groups. Starting with the safe converting, the first thing I want to do is establish a share price for the safe at conversion. And to do that, I need to know the pre-money valuation at the time of conversion. This is a pretty easy calculation. I am just taking the pre-money of the Series A and the valuation cap on my safe and taking the lesser of those two numbers. So the pre-money for the A is 24, my cap is 15, which would mean the pre-money for my safes at conversion is 15 million. Now I will take that 15 million divided by the pre-financing share count, in this case, 4 million shares, to get to the share price at conversion for the safe. One note, once I calculate the share price, I'm going to format it to have three decimal places. It is typical to have at least two Having two or three is a bit of a personal preference. I will always prefer to have three decimal places. Once I have the conversion share price, next I will calculate how many shares are acquired at conversion by taking my safe investment and having the denominator be my conversion share price. One note, when I'm calculating the shares acquired, I'm going to use the round function in Excel. So I'm only acquiring whole shares and wouldn't have any situations where it shows me buying a partial share. So according to this math, I would receive 400,000 shares if I were a safe investor at conversion. The last thing I'm gonna do is title this section just to make it clear, this little chunk of the model is where the safe conversion happened. Now that that is done, I'm going to go to my Series A calculations and show how many shares those investors acquire. To calculate the round share price, I take the Series A pre-money divided by the pre-financing share count. Again, with a safe under the pre-money method, 
I am saying the safe converts alongside the series A. And as a result, the shares acquired by the safe investors at conversion do not influence the series A share price. They are not included in the denominator. So the round share price under the above parameters would be $6 a share. We can use that to calculate how many series A shares are acquired by taking the series A investment divided by the round share price. Again, this is something I would round. Now that I have this, I can move on to the final piece, which is calculating the post money share count and the post money ownership for the different investors. The first thing I'll do is calculate the post money share count just to consolidate all of the different data points in one place. And that is simply taking in this case, the sum of the common stock, the converted safe and the series A to get to the post money share count, which will be the denominator to calculate the ownership for each of the different ownership groups. Now we can calculate the post money ownership. Now, one note that I want to make here, when looking at the ownership for the Series A, what you'll see is that the Series A is actually owning 23%. Now, when you go up to the Series A terms, if the pre-money valuation is 24 million and 8 million is invested, the post money would be 32 million and the Series A investment would typically represent 25% of the company on a post money basis. The reason this is not happening is because the safes being converted but not influencing the series A share count means the series A is actually owning less than the ownership you would expect if you just took the investment plus the pre-money as the denominator and the numerator was the series A investment amount. In the percent ownership method, which I'll cover in a subsequent video, you will see that by including the shares that are acquired by the safe investors in the count to establish the Series A share price, the Series A investors will then get the ownership you would expect based on adding the investment and the pre-money to get the post-money. Again, if you're interested in practicing this more with a variety of different types of scenarios and added complexity, things like option pools, stacked safes, safes that convert below the cap. On my course's website, I have practice problems for sale that provide a wide array of different financing situations and a step-by-step -step answer key for each of the problems provided. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions and have a wonderful day.